This is some pure nostalgia. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at something pretty damn cool and naughty at the same time. In my opinion, I had this golden opportunity to make a video about a piece of equipment that is absolutely cool to show you nowadays. It's obsolete, it makes no sense basically collecting it, but it's really fun to have. But I don't own this product. I borrowed it from my brother-in-law. He was cleaning up his attic and he found something pretty damn interesting that I'd love to make a video about and show you here on the channel. But one of the highlights he basically found in his old storage is this Super Pro Fighter, complete in a box. Yeah, what I've already shown you before is like when you're looking at this device, it costs around 200 freaking euro here if you just want to have like this single system in good working condition. But what is this product about? Because back in the days, the original games were pretty damn expensive. Oh, by the way, they are now expensive too, or some of them. But when you're looking at the Super Pro Fighter, it had nothing, by the way, to do with Street Fighter. It was quite an interesting piece of technology, because you had an option to basically make backups of your games. Not like we have nowadays. And what do we mean nowadays? That's quite simple. We have so many ways to play if you want to use original hardware and you just want to play games in a naughty way. So one of the ways you can play nowadays is with a multi-game card like this Super 131. We didn't have like this like amazing collections. Now back in the day we did have like multi-game cards but more like tiny ones like 401. But we were very happy if you had one of those because you had like four freaking games in one cartridge. But the Super Pro Fighter, it's basically the same thing that we had like with the EverDrive nowadays. And EverDrive like these, we do have like a lot of different models nowadays. You have the original grids, you have the Chinese versions, there are a lot of crazy versions out there. But basically in my opinion, the Super Console is more like an expensive novelty because you do have like these very cheap cards nowadays. They go around like 50 euro if I'm saying it correctly. Maybe they'll get expensive in the future. But like even the original ones are going up to 100 for 150 dollars. You can just slap in an SD card, what you can see over here at the games, plug it in and you can just play. But take considerations, these Super Plus 801 are limited with some games. For example, the special chip games don't work most of the time on these cheap ones. But also with the flash cards, you can go all crazy when it comes to prices. For example, with with this SD2 SNES Pro, they also call it different nowadays. Depending on the condition, the brand of the core, if you're going to buy it new or used, this SD2 SNES Pro, or different kind of version they also call it nowadays, has the capability of running a lot of games with special chips, and it even has the option to load instantly with the games. So it almost costs the same like the Super Pro Fighter, but you're going to get absolutely more options. But let's talk about the Super Pro Fighter because that's the reason why I clicked on this video, of course. The Super Pro Fighter, and again, nothing to do with the Capcom or Street Fighter. I don't know exactly why they call it like this, but you have like all kinds of models. So what this thing is, is having all kinds of options when it comes to loading up games. I think there was like some different versions when it comes to the capacity of the RAM inside of it. So there are a couple of different brands out there, but Super Pro Fighter, this was the one my brother-in-law had back as a child. And I can say like, wow, this is like absolutely crazy if you think about it, that you had the option basically to back up your games and play a lot of games for basically cheap. So when you're looking at the floppy drives, that was like the cheap storage option you had back in the day. Now we are like spoiled with so many different ways. Think about SD cards, USB thumb drives. They were not like being there. This is what the way you basically store your games. Absolutely holding this floppy drive is just pure nostalgia for me. Funny thing is like depending on the size of the game, yeah, you need like multiple freaking floppies. So yeah, it's like loading. The same, let's say the story you it, you having like a slow SD function or an average drive. You have like basically the even slower option to having needing one, two, and even like where bigger games you need like up to, let's say three or four freaking floppies that you need to switch between. Like back in the day, it was like something we are used to, but now it's like a freaking nightmare. But let's take a close look in the box itself. You can see the box does have some weird over here and there, but I can tell you like this is one of the best, like say quality box I've seen. Most of them are like completely ruined or not in good condition. Oh, there is even a box with the original formatted for IBM PC, like the floppy drives. It does even have some paperwork, like some old school stuff. Nothing really interesting. Do have like an extra stickers for the floppies, but that's basically what we can find in the box. And the funny thing is like if you're looking at the box and the value, like they're selling this thing for around 200 freaking euros nowadays here. I don't know how they go on, on eBay or something, or maybe in different countries when it comes to the dollar, but with box, it rises up the price like crazy. Man, this thing's by the way heavy as crazy. But let's go back in time. Let's remove the SD2 SNES and let's put in this gigantic beast of a copy box. 
because oh yeah this looks pretty damn weird seeing this super nes with this copy box on top it's kind of laughable nowadays if you see like how weird and frankenstein it looks i also made one for the n64 back in the day i don't know if you also have like a copy box for the sega mega drive i think it was but i personally never seen it in real life somehow the super nintendo versions are like more common over here but how does this thing actually work it's pretty damn simple if you're looking at the hardware part Another option I just want to point out, here you do have the option to add a CD-ROM drive or an option for a CD-ROM drive. But not particular to the system itself, what I understand of is the following thing. So at the back we do have the serial port, so it gives you the option to connect this thing with your PC. And what I understand of, or I can be wrong, that is basically what they tried to say with the CD-ROM. There are some options for transferring data and stuff like that. So I think it's pretty damn cool, back in the day they even have the option for this. But when you're looking at the way how this works, it's quite simple, but also interesting. Basically, you need to remove the cover of... You need to remove the freaking cover wicket, yep. <sighs> oh! Alright, so what I wanted to try is that we basically need to remove the cover over here. It's not the best quality in my opinion. It's still on here, but if you can find them with a broken one, I would not be surprised because it feels like flimsy plastic. So the next thing, what you needed to do is basically like load up your game. So plug it in, in here, and that's the first step. I already mentioned like depending on the size you need to get yourself like a new floppy disk and you can also rewrite an original one and put it in here so you can make a backup of the game up to the floppy drive over here and depending on the size sometimes you need like multiple of these freaking devices but let's connect everything because let's see if this thing works and we can even play it so basically what we need is like with the Sega stuff that we have seen before and if you didn't see it check the video. We need multiple power supplies. Do have like the power supply and the cable for AV out on the Super NES and we have like here the only thing that we need to use is the 9 volt over here. And that is like the 9 volt in consideration the original power supply was like a nightmare so my brother law bought a new one and he said that's going to be working just fine now. So everything has been connected and one powering on and the copy box still works you're going to be introduced by the special intro from the copy box itself saying fighter then we're going to be like getting the message we can skip by pressing a button and here we do have like the main menu okay so the next thing what we're going to do is boot up a game let's put the floppy drive in so next up we have the option to run the file have a gold finger cheat system and real life save and pressing select will bring you to the utility what you can see over here you can make like a save and run and i mean like the ec card like basically what you can do over here is like make a copy of the game run the game itself and here we can even like rename file delete format disk and load and save data and copy a file the first thing i want to do is run the file itself it will ask me to put in the disk somehow again But of course it was not working always perfectly. It is possible that the game itself has been corrupted what you can see over here. It still works but it does have like a lot of issues. So let's boot it up just to see how the actual gameplay is. But there was another option that we have like some read errors or read fails. So it was not like a system you can rely on for a very long time. This is a great example. There is audio but there is no image. So let's try a different game. But let's do a quick gameplay of the game that's actually in the system with Desert Strike. And next time we're going to make a backup just for nostalgia reasons. So then we have like an option just to load up the game, which you can see already is over here, saying run IC card. By pressing this, it will boot up the game, actually like an original game, and you can just play it like this. Oh yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is put in a floppy drive. I didn't, I didn't have any unless I empty ones. So we're going to reuse one that didn't have like a good game on it or basically having like a lot of issues. Next up, let's trick select and let's format the disk to begin with. Here you can see we even have like different options. Let's put it in 1.44 mega. That's basically the one that we're going to use, and let's format it. The format has been completed, and the next thing that we're going to do is load up the game. So let's try that. Oh, that sound alone from the floppy drive is nostalgia to me. Okay, let's go back to the menu. Oh crap, bring the wrong button! Oh. But here you can see the original game has been entered into the Super Pro Fighter, and let's make an Let's say backup 
to the floppy drive. I'm already showing you that the floppy drive in here has been formatted, ready to go. And let's choose over here, save IC card. And let's see if we can load it up. Okay, here we have like even the option to put, choose for a single file or multi file. Just use a single one. You can even give it a name. Who cool is that? So that's what we're going to do. And this control needs to work. They give it a name, desert. All right. And let's see. Press B to accept. And here you can see it starts creating the file. And I must say that it does it very quickly. Even that the game is quite big. But again, like if you're having like a 12 um, cartridge, it's going to take for a very long time. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is turn it off. Remove the original game. You can see in here the floppy drive is still insert. Let's turn it on. Let's power on the machine itself. And just use run file. And here it goes, loading up into the machine itself. Let's see if the first copy to the floppy drive did a good job. You can see like it's the same amount of course, 120 loading file. File name is desert. That's basically why you need to put in the name. So you know when you basically like loading up that it actually works. And what kind of basically file or system it is or game. And this is one of those way why I freaking hate these things. <laughs> Uh, the reader why we just made a freaking fresh backup so the thing that we're going to do we're going to try it again just to see if we can try to freaking use it beginning of this video i told you i didn't have any brand new ones but i found one in the collection so that's what we're going to do what we're going to do is format it we're going to save it again and we're going to do all the freaking jingle over just to see if we can actually load up the freaking game the weird thing is it formats it saves us but somehow I cannot load the freaking game because it keeps giving me the freaking error it's not even going to the zero percent because like around the 30 it gives me read error again like ugh, let's try something different the funny thing is like back in the day even had like these let's say floppy drives that were like having modified including some <laughs> including some cheating for example this one has like unlimited balls with the pinball game that's kind of cool so the idea behind it was pretty damn cool and loading times were in my opinion not very long, especially when you're having only one floppy drive. But I can tell you like this game already says over here, it's a nightmare with some of the, let's say, games because it doesn't even like boot it up somehow, like it's messed up. I tried to make a couple of, let's say, backups again, but nope, nothing seems to be working. It can be maybe a problem with the game, oh, come on man, like Desert Strike or you can try a different game, of course. But it was a struggle we had back in the day. And maybe you even relate to that. For me, it was just like a revisiting to something that is old and naughty. I must say nowadays, in my opinion, collecting this, I don't know, it's maybe fun to have in your collection, and especially if you have some personal feelings for it, because you owned it or you wanted to have it as a child. But of course, if you want to play it on it, it's pure, pure nostalgia. But of course, we have like so many different options like these cheap EverDrive are doing exactly the same thing and don't have all the issues like when it comes to errors. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this Super Pro Fighter or do you have any connection with it? But thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell and become one of the Wicked family. It will be great to see you in the next video.